The signings continue to roll in from around the country, but there's plenty to talk about from around the state. From the Dodge Sports Desk, I'm Jenny Carlson, and this is a signing day update with Ryan Aber. All right, Ryan, it looks like the OU and OSU classes are practically in place. Let's talk about OU for a second. Ron L. Lewis, Dewar product, uh, he has signed with the Sooners. What sort of player do you expect him to be for OU? I think a lot of people have questions over him just because he played at a place like Dewar that played uh, eight man until his senior year, played Class A this year. But uh, you look at him, he's physically ready to play at the Big 12 level. I really think that he's going to be a, a, a guy who can contribute, maybe, ne maybe not next year, maybe a year down the road, but uh, can make some waves there at linebacker for them. So he's a guy that you feel like linebacker is where he will stick? Yeah, I think that's where he's going to end up. Uh, I don't think he's going to play on offense, although he was a great running back in, in high school. I think uh, they need help at linebacker, and uh, that's going to end up where he's going to be. All right, let's turn our attention to Oklahoma State for a second. There's been some good discussion on our live blog at NewsOK.com about Colton Richardson, an Ada product, going to OSU. Let's talk a little bit about him for a second. First of all, Ada guys don't normally <laughs> go to OSU, so talk about that, but then also give us an idea of where he may fit in for the Cowboys. Well, they've got him listed as a linebacker, uh, and I think that's where he's going to end up with uh, some flexibility. He could end up playing a little bit of strong safety, could sort of end up being in that position, the flex position, sort of like what Andre Sexton has given them, and I think he could move back and forth there. All right. Uh, a quick update on Dante Foster. We talked about him in our first update today with OSU now having an extra spot. Has there been any movement on an offer for Guthrie's Dante Foster? No, there really hasn't yet. I actually uh, been communicating with Dante a little bit this morning, and he said uh, he hadn't heard anything yet, and also Scott Wright told us uh, earlier that uh, there wouldn't be anything additional today from OSU. So it could be something where they wait until tonight, sort of regroup and uh, decide if Dante is the way they want to go, if they want to go with the, the Berg kid out of Florida who's currently committed to Ole Miss. All right. Let's turn our attention to a, a, a high school guy from here in the Oklahoma City area, Timothy Flanders, Midwest City. He's had some uh, commitment drama over the last few days. Talk about Timothy. He's signed with Kansas State. Well, Timothy waited uh, a little bit uh, deep in the process before finally committing to TU once he th thought that he wasn't going to get any of those big-time offers from Big 12 or, or BCS-type programs, and his brother's up at TU. But uh, Kansas State came in late uh, after Bill Snyder, the coaching change. Toledo was on him really hard as well. And uh, he wound up, even with an o OSU offer late, uh, decided that Kansas State's where he wanted to be, wanted to play running back in college. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how he develops. He's a little bit undersized, but uh, certainly had the credentials after this year. Considering the coaching change, is he a guy that could maybe get on the field quickly for the Wildcats? Yeah, I think uh, just from talking to him, at least the, the, what he's hearing from the KSU uh, staff is that he will get a chance to play uh, relatively quickly. And at the spot where he wanted to, OSU wanted him as a DB. Uh, and he really wants to prove that he can play running back at that level. All right, Ryan's going to continue to follow all the signing day coverage. We'll be back here for an afternoon update. Stay at NewsOK.com for all your signing day coverage.